Knock, knock, it's Knuckles. Hey sis, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a product chatting releases about video. And we're gonna start right now. Jeffree Star Cosmetics is a brand that I don't need to talk about on my channel anymore because people know that I am not a supporter of Jefferson Starship. What an alienating way to start my video. The thing about being a fan of people like Jeffree Star is that you can do whatever you wanna do and I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. And those things often won't intersect because here's a fun fact. Bring it in close, closer. Closer. We're different people. So Jeffree Star is putting out a new eyeshadow palette. As a heavy supporter of purple eyeshadow, I do have some qualms with this palette. Like, why is there not like a true dark purple, like conquered grape style color? I think this palette would be amazing for very like light purple, sort of like dreamy looks, just like something kind of like what I'm wearing right now on my eyes, <laughs> Yanari. To be quite frank with y'all, recently, less and less have I been totally consumed by wanton desire for a makeup product. Maybe I'm just feeling fulfilled in other aspects of my life. No, maybe I'm just depressed. Couple more things about this palette, that shimmery pink is gorgeous, and I love that turquoise. I really like using things like pink and turquoise together. I don't know, I feel like it's kind of boring. I feel like it's not anything new or interesting from this brand. Not to totally like destroy the brand. I, there is a lot from Jeffree Star Cosmetics that I think is really cool. It'd be really funny if I put like the arrested development footage not found thing in there. Future Nisa, do that. I bitch, damn. It's very powerful recording videos, knowing that I'm gonna have to edit them later. I feel like I can be really like demanding to my future self and she'll do it. Like, hey, editing Nisa. What? That's right, I knew you'd answer me. I want you to pitch my voice way up right now. Now pitch it way down low. That's right, you have to do whatever I say. Cause I'm the talent, you're just the cog in the machine that works for me. <laughs> what am I talking about? God, okay. Jeffree Star Cosmetics in tandem with this launch of the palette is also coming out with a couple new lip glosses. They look like this. From what I know about Jeffree Star Cosmetics' lip gloss formula, it's a thinner formula, ideal for topping liquid lipsticks with. Honestly, how could I begrudge more lip gloss being added to the world? I wish every liquid in the world was lip gloss. Do you think I really care about having oceans? Listen, the world is dying anyway. We might as well just soak up the oceans with a moist towelette of some variety and replace the rest of it with lip gloss. Like what's the real challenge? All sea life dying? We haven't even explored the entire ocean. We don't even know if they will die. Maybe fish thrive in lip gloss. We're not gonna know until we find out. I mean, I think I should be president, but you know, that's that's besides the point. These lip glosses look so glittery. I don't like a glittery lip gloss, but I know a lot of people do. It's kind of one of those apples to oranges things. Like people who have decided that they love Jeffree Star Cosmetics are gonna buy this stuff regardless. And it doesn't really matter what hating ass bitches like me have to say about it, but goddamn, we talk anyway, don't we? So ColourPop has been kind of quiet recently. I feel like earlier in the year, closer to the holiday season, every couple of seconds would tick tock on the clock by and ColourPop was like, here's 17 new eyeshadow palettes. We just took the same five colors and rotated them. Do you want it? And we're like, no. And they're like, okay, you're gonna buy it though. And we're like, yeah, we are. <laughs> but ColourPop has been making some interesting, cool choices recently. Choosing to collab with not an influencer, but an intellectual property. ColourPop is collaborating with Sailor Moon. So smart just a genius thing to do from a marketing business standpoint. I mean, I am in business school after all, so it's important for me to take note of these things. I mean, it's the same thing when Disney collabs with a makeup brand, right? If you can bank on nostalgia to wring money out of the, you know, starving makeup obsessed masses, do it. If you're trying to make a buck and you can't collaborate with an influencer who has a built-in fan base of millions of children, what's up, Tartan Lele Pons? Go for nostalgia. Nostalgia is gonna make you coin. Okay? If you do it even kind of right, nostalgia's gonna make you coin. Because you have the super discerning people, the kind of people who are gonna get Gem and the Holograms pulled from theaters because it was so unfaithful to the original animated series. And you also have the people who are just gonna buy literally anything that has the name of the thing they like on it. I was that kind of person once upon a time. Like when I was, you know, 
a little mini meatball, a little Swedish meatball when I was like maybe 10 or 11. If any product had Hello Kitty on it, I needed to own it. It could be literally any product. I was like, oh, is, is, my, is my kitty bitch on there? Mom, put it in the car. Do not talk back to me, Denise. You know I am 150 pounds and I can suplex you even though I'm seven. Put it in the car. I'm really gonna have a nip slip in this video. Oh my God. I need double-sided tape. <laughs> so I understand the drive to want to get something just because it has something you like on it. We have people on Twitter being like, yep, Sailor Moon, I'm buying it. I literally don't care what it is. It is Sailor Moon themed, so I'm going to own it. I saw a great point on Twitter the other day. If you cover the top part that has Sailor Moon on it, do you want this palette? Which is so smart. Think about it. Think about the actual product that you are going to use when you buy this, the eyeshadow inside of it. If you, for some reason, no longer had this packaging, like your palette got run over by a car and for some reason all the eyeshadow was salvageable, but the packaging itself was ruined, would you still want this? Do you think you would still use it? For a lot of people, the answer to that question is absolutely not. And those are the people who should skip it. Now, what the hell? I couldn't even feel that was happening. I guess I could just change my shirt, but no, I don't want to. I love this shirt. This is a little bit different to my point I make sometimes where I'm like, you don't need to buy makeup to support your fave. Sailor Moon isn't gonna get her feelings hurt by you not buying the eyeshadow palette because she's not real. But you might get your feelings hurt if you are that much of a Sailor Moon fan if you don't buy the palette because you wanna surround yourself with things that remind you of this thing you love. But you have to remind yourself you are still buying a product. You are still buying something that you should use for an actual function. At the end of the day, it's your money in your bank account. Make whatever choice is going to be the actual best for you in the long run, which I have to do all the time. I have to ask myself, what choice is going to be the most beneficial to future Nisa at this very juncture in time? Sometimes it is not eating something. Sometimes it is eating something. And indeed, sometimes it is passing on purchasing something because I don't need it right now and I don't have a reason to splurge on that particular indulgence right now. Which is how I like to phrase things as opposed to like, do I need this right now? Because like, no, you don't ever need something and it's very easy to tell yourself, well, yes, I do need it right now. And it continues to sort of like blur the lines between when you actually do and don't need something. What I like to say is like, is this a good time to indulge in this treat? For me, a lot of times the treat is like a literal cake. So I have to ask myself it quite a, a lot. Ah, I have a cute little like consent card and you can't even see it. It says, kiss me and ask me what else they like. <laughs> consent is very important. Ask me for consent because it's never implied. That's right. Well, I guess I should probably talk about the palette itself. So full disclosure, I never really watched Sailor Moon. I was aware of it as a kid. And when I was in elementary school, we would always play Sailor Moon at recess. And I didn't really know who the girls were. So they were like, you be Sailor Jupiter because you're tall. And I was like, I bet. I wasn't watching Sailor Moon growing up. I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh. So when I can buy a blue eyes white dragon palette or get like a set of ColourPop products curated by the one and only Seto Kaiba, then we can talk. Like I, as a POC of color, I probably wouldn't get a ton of use out of this. I think it's pretty though. I think it would work really well in tandem with like a more true neutral palette. Like if you had a palette where you had your staple dark browns in, this would be a real cute addition. So ColourPop is issuing a full scale attack against me, my body, my psyche, and my checking account by putting out another line of lip glosses. These are the Luxe lip glosses. I saw this and it made the makeup goblin inside of me be like, lip gloss for our mouths. Okay, so we're getting this one. We're getting this one and this one and this one. We're getting that in it. And I was like, bitch, no, you're not. I need to show you some. This isn't even all of them. I have like literally seven in my purse right now. I never used to be the type of person who had a bunch of lip products in their purse. Now I do because there's no space for them in here. I'm ashamed. I feel like I just decluttered these like a year ago and now I need to do it again, but I can't. This is my family. Do you understand me? I literally birthed some of these. There's like a bunch of Franken glosses in here. I can't get rid of them. And so, I can't buy any more. I need to use some of my lip glosses up, which may seem daunting, but when you wear as much lip gloss as I do, it's actually not that hard. I have no need. It's a bad time to indulge in the treat of getting more lip glosses, so I'm resisting. And if you see me in the streets, 
Applying a ColourPop Luxe Lip Gloss. Don't say anything about it, I. I'm saying that because I get DMs all the time of people being like, hey, I saw you in public. I'm like, listen, you ought to come up to me because getting these messages, I'm like, damn, when did I look the ugliest today? That's probably when they saw me. Talk to me. Well, actually shout my name from a distance so then I have time to like take out a mirror and be like, how many full course meals do I have stuck in my teeth right now? Got it. Hi. Like that's what I need to do. I need my time and my space to make sure I look like a member of the human race. Bars! Oh my god. Oh fuck, these are so pretty. <laughs> Damn. Jaclyn Hill! God, again with this! Jaclyn Hill is a very polarizing figure in the makeup community because she lies a lot. <laughs> I have noticed this kind of pattern with Jaclyn Hill where she'll get like really open with her audience and really just like, here is me telling you about my struggles and about my anxiety and also buy this palette. And it's this kind of thing where if she just didn't try to sell something in the same videos where she's like, I'm sad and depressed and all this stuff, I feel like it would really change people's opinion of her. I mean, obviously there are a lot of people who have just like written her, is my entire breast out? No, okay, great. Obviously there are people who have just written her off as a liar and a shill and a scammer and what have you. But I feel like there are so many people who are still kind of holding a candle for like the Jaclyn Hill of yore to return and for her to be like honest and not trying to make a buck off of everybody who gives her any attention anymore. And if she would just like, I understand it's so hard to do. Like I, sometimes I struggle with making videos and nobody's even mad at me. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to peel away a layer of myself for the entertainment of the internet today. And I imagine that Jaclyn Hill feels that tenfold constantly. The steps to rehabilitate her image really lie in having the stamina to keep coming back for the people who are still holding a little bit of faith in her. But you know, it's just my opinion as the unofficial publicist of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun like little mini series like YouTube publicist where I just like take a YouTuber who's in a scandal and be like, okay, here's what you did wrong. Are there any people on YouTube who are publicists who do that? That's like a million dollar video idea. Yo, if you're a publicist and you don't have a YouTube channel where you play YouTube publicist, what are you waiting for? If you do it, credit me or I'll come to your house. <laughs> I'll come to your house and I'll turn over your garbage cans like a raccoon. <laughs> I'll be afraid to ask out your crush. I'd be in their backyard overturning their garbage cans. You'll be afraid to tell your crush you like them. I'm in their garbage can. <laughs> I'm chewing on the label of a little Debbie cake from two weeks ago. We are not the same. You in his DMs, I'm a raccoon. We are not the same. Oh, right, uh, the palette. <laughs> it's kind of not giving us anything new. Back in the day when the original Jaclyn Hill palette came out, it almost seemed innovative because it was a Morphe palette that actually add colors in it. Now, fast forwarding even like, you know, two years, this seems dated, this seems done, this seems like it's not bringing anything to the table, this doesn't have any new edge to it. You could say that this is going to be somebody's perfect everyday palette, but so are most palettes that are even kind of neutral. And you couple the lack of ingenuity in this palette with the fact that it is a release between a brand that has trust issues and an influencer that has even bigger trust issues, I mean, like, I don't really see it going anywhere, ma'am. You could have kept that in the drafts. Melt Cosmetics is putting out a new eyeshadow palette. Melt is like, y'all are never getting these stacks again. We learned how to make regular palettes and we're never going back. This is the Millennial Pinks palette. Okay, so I'm a millennial. I'm a millennial. I was born in 1994. Being a millennial is very important to me because now I get it, you know? Now that there's a full generation of cognizant human beings under me, the Gen Zers or the Zoomers. What's up, Zoomers? You guys have homework? <laughs> Imagine being 15, like, <laughs> still grow up. <laughs> but now that I have a generation under me, I kind of know how like Gen X felt for the whole time I was growing up. I used to think Gen Xers were super whiny, but I'm like, oh no, I get it the children are reminding me of my mortality. That's why I'm resentful of them. So I appreciate that this palette pays homage to my generation, the millennials. That being said, I don't actually like this palette all that much. Now, there are some things that this palette does right, like including a silver. You can't go wrong putting a silver eyeshadow in a palette. I don't see a functional use for those two darkest shades. It's just too really dark, like a slate gray and a black mixed with these like very like light fluttery tones. I just don't really see it. I don't really see the vision. I don't really see the vibes. We're at a point now in the beauty world where there's just so much makeup that nothing is a moment anymore. 
nothing really captures our attention for longer than like two or so days. I miss the halcyon days of old beauty YouTube where we'd all be talking about one MAC product for a full month. Things changed, but not even just that they changed, it's that they changed over time in a way that is different from what I was originally used to during the time period before that change happened. I just feel like it's very uh, deep and intellectual of me to say that. God damn, I literally don't care about anything. Should I talk about my birthday and how it's soon? So like I said, I'm almost 26. I don't wanna talk about it. Um, I'm excited to be 26 because I kind of feel like I have my life together. For a very long time, 26 has been the arbitrary age by which I believed I needed to have my life together. I don't. Know Know what caused this. I don't know why I chose 26, but like I do kind of have things like figured out for now. I have a full-time job. I'm in graduate school for business. I'm in business school. I'm getting an MBA. Have I mentioned that ever? <laughs> A YouTube channel. I was gonna say successful YouTube channel, but I definitely have a YouTube channel. Like I can definitely log into YouTube and there's videos there. The success of it is debatable, but it does exist. I'm like healthy. I can't say that too loud because then my scale will hear me and like come barging in like, bitch is not lying to the internet. You know, I'm like healthy. Like I have eaten a cucumber at a point. Like whatever, we don't have to split hairs. My hair is growing, girl. Like I haven't been able to do this hairstyle like dead ass since like before I got my hair. I look at the version of me who made that video of talking about the pros and cons of shaving heads and be like, damn, that bitch is sad. Like she's so sad. She's me, I'm her, but I'm not her because I'm not sad and she's sad. Oh God, what a time, what a time to be alive. Living in the future, blinging up my hotline. Are we in the LOL so random tacos XD part of the video? Cause I think we are baby. <laughs> See, I like drinking tomato juice because it's like drinking pasta sauce, but runny. Wait, I'm reviewing some of these ColourPop Luxe lipsticks and I'm looking at the names. These are like, Naughty. Oh, that's actually nice. I'm really hot. Because of all the talent I exhibited on my face when I made this eye look, <laughs> I broke a swat. Like, girl, just cuddle. <laughs> Ticklish. Overnight, tied up. Girl, I hope you mean with errands. <laughs> I cannot imagine what that could be referring to. Not in my Christian household, <laughs> but maybe in my Christian basement. <laughs> Don't perceive me. I can feel you perceiving me and I don't want you to. Come through? Where? The Bible store? Slow motion? What's gonna be slow motion? Me while I'm reading these scriptures, mama? <laughs> you wanna hear me read these scriptures, daddy? <laughs> Wait, I can read, I'm not gonna read scriptures, Nisa, that it's not good content. I'll read one scripture, whatever. <laughs> I have to be very careful because this Bible is older than I am. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. That was nice. Dude, I'm not joking. This is like a very, very old Bible. This was given to my dad, June 21st, 1955. That's like a hundred years ago. There's just like not anything going on that I care about right now <laughs> in the beauty community. After my dad died when I was nine, my friend Naomi and her dad took me to the aquarium and I just remember staring at a, at a clownfish uh, fighting back tears. <laughs> I haven't seen in Ferris Bueller's Day Off where Cameron is like staring at that one painting and it just keeps cutting from like him to the painting. That was like me, clownfish, me. <laughs> oh God. Is it, is it childhood trauma time? <laughs> is, it childhood, is it the childhood trauma hour? Well, the important thing is I look beautiful. So thanks so much for, I feel like such a failure. This is like not a good place. And they didn't even do anything. I didn't even say anything. I didn't even talk about anything. Before you leave, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me. That would be really productive. And if you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok 
at Nisi Pisa. I also have a second channel called Extra Nisi Pisa where I post music and covers that I will link in the description. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa for 10% off at checkout at your local stupid goddamn content store. Okay, bye. Quench wap supreme.